Welcome to WhatPod, out by Wattba. My name is Wadodify, also known as Walid. This is Fike, uh, co-host on What a Time to Podcast, powered by Wattba. Um, so Fike, do you want to introduce yourself as one of the co-hosts? Well, I think you already introduced me, Wadodify, oh, but thanks. I'll introduce myself nonetheless. Uh, so my name is Fike. Obviously, me and um, Wadodify just started <laughs> our podcast, so bear with us. Um, uh, I'm not as experienced as um, young Wadodify here, but I'll still try my best to keep up. And uh, I don't think you guys can see him, but we are joined by a president here as well, who's keeping a very close eye on us. Yeah. Um, if we don't perform, we will lose this job. So uh, we'll lose all shares in the company. We'll we don't have any everything. shares, actually. Yeah, but, this is um, all free work. We will actually lose our lives. Yeah. So if I sweat, I'm sorry, I'm just very nervous. Yeah, there's a gun pointed at us. No, there isn't a gun pointed at us. <laughs> Those are just his eyes. Those are just his, his eyes. eyes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, we should probably say what our podcast is and then also introduce what but so do you want to go for the podcast yeah sure so um yeah we we, this podcast is just you know for um casual talks Mm -hmm. we want to entertain as much as possible of course but also i suppose inform inform as much as we can as well yeah yeah i mean it's just you know general chat um uh, we believe we can offer something like discourse and conversation uh we're not um you know scholars or anything but you know that's probably why people we're hoping that people want to listen to us um, and of course, you know, um, Walid here is, is taking the lead. Uh, be sure to check out his podcast as well. Um, and I think you're pretty much, I think you have some stuff to say as well. Yeah. I've run so... out of stuff to say. <laughs> so I'm passing over to you. <laughs> it's the third post, first, yeah. first podcast, even I can't talk, but yeah. it's all right. Um, so we are powered by Wattba and Wattba, what, Wattba is, it's a really big tongue twister, but what Wattba is, is essentially, you know, a booking app for barbers. Uh, beauticians salons um it's an app where you know depending on where you are you can see all the nearby barbers beauticians salons you can choose you know things such as i want to shave i want to get my hair done i want you know different colored hair today i want to wax um and that's all available on this app um which is available in the app store as well soon um not currently but it's currently being worked on and very soon you know they are the ones providing this podcast to you guys so you know Check out Wattba. Um, if it's out, you'll know it's out because it'll be everywhere. Um, and you'll be, you know, probably the last one to find out because 100%. it's going to be such a good app uh, to come out. Yeah, guys, this is going to be a game changer. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, benefits that barbers themselves are receiving from it. Mm. But really, to be honest with you, it's probably for the user more than anything else. Yeah, for sure. You can literally choose your timings rather than calling up each barber, making sure your barber is actually present. Yeah. You can actually go on the barber himself or herself for a beautician. Um, and you can just book a slot with them. So, um, you know, it's a no-brainer in that regard. Yeah. Um, and again, the lovely or um, well, the boss actually as well. <laughs> the <laughs> the they're the ones boss. providing the podcast. Um and we're just happy to be part of it, to be honest. Yeah, to be honest, it's just a great opportunity to do, you know, creative work that we've always wanted to do, and now we've got a you know, good outlet to do that. Um, but yeah, speaking about the app, I actually have a little barber story of my own. Go so on. I got my haircut yesterday, you know, to check out the haircut. But I got it yesterday, um, and I got it from the barber I didn't want the haircut from. <laughs> so oh, my actual so barber was not there. Um, but I obviously didn't know that because they're not on Wattba. So I didn't know if my barber's there or not. So I walk in. Um, this man is really excited to see me because he's the only one not cutting anyone's hair. And then he's like, oh, come in, sir. Sit down. I'm like, yeah, I guess I have to sit down now because I can't just be like, no, I'm leaving. <laughs> that was always awkward to be honest with you. The yeah. thing is, I actually, I actually was in the same situation as you. The thing is, when you go to a, a place and it's not your barber, of course, you know, if we had the app, that wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so, you know, people in what bar better, better hurry up with the app. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm waiting too. <laughs> anyways, I'm waiting. <laughs> when you're in that scenario, it's quite awkward because, um, you know, they're quite excited to show off their talents. Yeah. Um, there's some who are nervous, but, you know, they'll be quite honest with you. Um, but when you go to that barber often, you know, they know your hairstyle. They know what kind of cut you want. They want to demonstrate, you know, that they can cut hair. Yeah, for um, sure. I mean, what's your, what's your position? Do you, obviously you gave them a chance, but do you like giving new barbers a chance? Or do, are you hesitant? With me, it's like, if my actual barber's there, I'll wait for him. But if he's yeah. not there, I'll just get it done by any of them. Like, I trust the shop enough that, you know, the owner's got good skill, the barbers all have good skill. So yeah. they all put their own twist on it. And each time they cut my hair, to be honest, I actually really like it. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I suppose the, the key about, you know, your style is, um, it's good to change, I suppose, and different barbers will offer different 
things as well you know so yeah for sure sometimes um if i'm if a new guy is there um, who can't really because the previous guy has a certain way of cutting my hair mm-hmm. so if i want to try a different style i may ask them what they can do and yeah i'll try that style it could be a small difference could be a big difference yeah it could be low fed could be high fed um but generally i think people the majority of people don't actually do that mm. the majority of people like to have their barbers yeah um they will actually go to the store and if the barber's not in they'll actually just leave yeah exactly so imagine taking your time out of the day yeah you've driven or walked or whatever it is got on the bus to get to the barber shop uh, and then all of a sudden he's not there leave yeah exactly I just think that's a total time waster yeah like for me i did like a 15 minute walk to my barbers and my barber wasn't there i mean the first time i went to cut my hair was bank holiday monday and i forgot it was bank holiday monday but it's just you know they weren't open um and it would be useful information from the what app but you know of course um, of course yeah that's still not out yeah and they're still not signed up to it but um, I just wanted to talk a bit more about bank holiday and moving forward as well. You know, like when if it's really weird how the weather quickly changes as well. Yeah, for sure. I know it's a bit, like this is crazy. Like before bank holiday, you know, um, getting a haircut wasn't that. You know, getting a fade would have waited because it was cold. Yeah, so those guys get a yeah. fade. Um, but then you know, all of a sudden you get that fade summer hits and it is quite nice. But it's crazy how quickly things. Have yeah, just gone. switched. Someone just hit out like, of nowhere. Like it's like half past midnight and it's still like almost 20 degrees yeah and exactly. i'm sweating <laughs> right now like it's really yeah. bad <laughs> I'm thinking we're, we're yeah. all sweating um <laughs> yeah with the heat especially especially this apartment i mean this yeah we woke up with flies running around here as well yeah. new friends new yeah. friends yeah and yeah, well friends, I don't know friends. <laughs> yeah I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're my best friends they're quite annoying yeah what bar uh president actually has my friends hostage <laughs> that's fine <laughs> he has us podcast. hostage Let, let's not yeah, forget sorry, that, that the what yeah. boss has us a hostage but yeah ransom was really low as well just no one wanted to pay us yeah no one no one cared about us yeah, anyways. <laughs> um yeah. but yeah i mean I, I think that's enough talking about you know the introduction of the podcast and what um but what's something i mean what's something something that's very still you know in right now is lockdown experiences yeah um we're still technically in sort of a lockdown where we're still restricted here in london um but i wanted to ask you know how was your you know lockdown from when it started till now like how did you go through it how did you feel how did it affect you i think it was um it was really interesting because this time we were all used to lockdowns like Mm -hmm. we knew what they were about so when they actually first when it was first announced in january it was like a long time ago everyone just knew what the, what was going to happen yeah so mentally i think i already prepared a little bit you know um i tried to learn new hobbies etc but the weird part was coming out of it um, yeah when you're adjusting to the new life mm-hmm. um you sort of have to get used to seeing people yeah um i actually get really awkward sometimes and um you know, speaking to normal people uh, making eye contact with people yeah kind of really weird and I don't know, I mean, I think most people out there are still getting adjusted now, but I suppose the only thing you can do is just keep carry on talking, carry on meeting, so yeah. the awkwardness goes away. But I yeah, mean, everyone becomes a bit more introverted, right? Yeah, like, I mean, um, for, me, for me, I mean, like from March, when lockdown started, because um, of my degree and what I do, gen- I mean, I just sit at home and play games. So to me, it wasn't even like I had a lockdown. Like to me, it was just like another day at home. Because yeah. even if there was no lockdown, I wouldn't leave my house and go somewhere. I'd still be at home, you know, doing my uni work or just playing games and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like lockdown for me, like it was a big, good, positive change. Because yeah. it slowed down my life a lot. So like I was so in that race that I got to get my degree done. I got to get this coursework done. I got to get this done, that done. Um, and lockdown just put a pause on everything. And it was like, you know, you can have time to yourself and you can like build on yourself yeah and really improve yourself and just do things you wanted to always do so you know like loads of people have started businesses loads of people have started you know doing you know their own things going on social media doing podcasts like podcasts like shot up yeah, during crazy. lockdown like crazy, crazy yeah, yeah. yeah i mean we're doing one so clearly it's, it <laughs> it's popular something, yeah. something right about it i mean the thing is, is that it is a good opportunity but it also you know um impacts it you just, you just never know how it's going to impact you, you never yeah know for how sure you're turn out on the other end um, but I think, I think we're quite lucky in the sense that like, like we live in a family. Yeah, like If for I was sure. living by myself, I'm not sure how I would turn out, but having yeah. a family still means I'm seeing people to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gives me the balance of good space away from everything, but also having social contact. Yeah. Than none. 
Yeah, no, for sure. Having family around was probably really good. Um, I mean, especially for me, because all my brothers were like so busy with work, yeah. um, you know, other stuff as well. And then lockdown happened, and it was like sort of like forced to stay home. But then it's like you, know, you can talk to each other a bit more. Yeah. Usually, like one brother's gone, the other brother's gone. You're home alone. You know, it's just you and mom or something. Dad's at work. And yeah. now it's like everyone's home, everyone's, you know, connecting, sharing stories, having yeah. fun nights, watching movies, things like that. Things you wouldn't naturally do on a normal week. There, there is one thing as well, though, that, you know, I think during last lockdown, and I'm in this one as well, is that people are generally more active on social media and yeah. like, keeping up with the news. So a lot of things were happening that people, you know, really, like, for example, I think it was the last lockdown we had a massive protest. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like Black Lives Matter protests and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the movement was huge, and it does beg the question that you know, would we have had the same impact if it wasn't for lockdown at the time or COVID at the time? Yeah, it really gave chance to people to hone in that I'm going to take action. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, I feel like we would have the same effect because there was a real serious injustice. Yeah. But I feel like more people came out mm. because they had they there was more people aware, so. Even now, um, like last lockdown, I was like really on social media. But then after that, I just took a little break because it gets a bit too much. But for people who have that break because they're like going to work, going home, taking care of kids and stuff, they can now sit down and be like, okay, this is the real news. Like this is what's really happening around us. Um, And I want to, you know, I'm hurt that this has happened and I want to take a change. Like I want to make a stance and say, you know, this is wrong. So I think the lockdown gave more power to these protests these you know you know like peaceful protests these walks that they did in london and elsewhere in the countries that like really made a big change yeah i mean i think what's interesting as well is actually how they consumed that knowledge because um on the one hand you know this horrible thing happened but i think a lot of times when people go to work for example they actually get the news from their colleagues yeah and you could argue that maybe that's not the best way to do it because you're very at the first glance you're getting an opinionated yeah, for response, sure. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 100%. Whereas when you're getting everything at once on social media, you can mm-hmm. sort of look at different things and you can see for yourself what's going on. Which is why probably most people had a unified response. Yeah. I think. But depending on where you are, before that would make an impact. I think now is more like everyone sort of saw this and they're like, well, this is... Right. Yeah, because you had people who were very differently opinionated yeah. coming together for one cause. Yeah. And those yeah, people yeah. would never interact with each other unless they were, you know, at home looking at all this information. Like, I think Twitter was mainly, you know, the biggest one for that. And on Twitter, it's easy to just be in your own little bubble yeah. on, the, on, the, on the platform. But the way that Twitter gave you the news and the feed was to, you know, show this side, that side, you know, all the different sides. And it really brought to light the issues. Yeah. And lots of people who, you know, naturally, like you said, talk to work colleagues. You know, maybe a work colleague is, you know, against it yeah and he would be like oh it's just a joke whatever and then you would be like okay no let, let's not let's not no, take a look no. at it let's not you know whatever someone's saying it's probably just to you know promote it or whatever like it's probably not true yeah, so, yeah. i think um i think everyone sort of um if they use social media internet wisely they can make up their own mind yeah but i suppose on the other hand, like you mentioned, you know, if your colleague will say something, it's not that serious, you may not take it serious. Yeah. There is a danger as well that if you go, for example, just if you just rely on YouTube, for example, for your knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> it becomes a very weird path because as soon as you watch one video, because of the metrics, yeah, you get something else coming up. Yeah, for sure. For example, if I see one video which is on the left or mm. the right, the next video will be an extreme of that version. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 100%. Which is crazy because on one hand, you're watching this, you know, quite... Not, not really swayed to one side, but, you know, a very random video on politics. Mm. And the next thing you're probably looking to a conspiracy. Yeah. And, and if you don't want aware of that, it's very easy to take those facts. I think, I, think, I think I'm lucky that I know most of the facts out there, but yeah. I did definitely have that where I, you know, I like watched like a random video talking about, you know, the, you know, the wage gap between men and women. Yeah. It's a generic video about it. Um, and then all of a sudden you get like Ben Shapiro. He's pretty strong on his opinions <laughs> he is about very it. Strong, strong yeah, strong, like he, yeah. he's he's not quiet about his opinions nah. on it. So he's cr- pretty like critiquing it hard. So he's there, and then you've got the complete opposite, where there's a you know, you know, they say feminist, but someone who's saying you know maybe this is not right. Like we should take a look. Yeah. 
and then you get both sides and then you're just sad and like what the hell is going on like you're you're in this confused state of mind like is he right is he right is that right is that right like well, well that's the thing when you get two extreme you know, polar opposites yeah it's so difficult to realize what's going on because yeah. both of them view the facts so differently exactly yeah that it just confuses you but yeah i mean like we i mean those of you who have not heard of ben shapiro like I mean, it's kind of hard not to know about it's him really when you're when you're talking about, about politics and different things. But his I, opinions are so strong. Yeah, yeah, and he does not. Um, he'll get straight to the point because yeah. he just speaks so quickly. So yeah. it's a very short video, and you'll get his opinion <laughs> exactly how he wants. You to get his opinion in like three minutes. <laughs> yeah, which is why those movie reviews are brilliant. It's yeah, just so yeah, in depth. I mean, we're kind of steering away from <laughs> you know the initial lockdown talk, but yeah. you know, during lockdown, did you have any like self improving tasks or projects that you took on, like something you were like? You know what? Like you said, hobbies you picked up. Yeah. You were like, yeah, you know, yeah. this is something I've always wanted to do. I now have the time. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just hobbies. Uh, it wasn't just um, I had a plan beforehand. I actually mm-hmm. um, learned about something new during lockdown. Yeah. And I realized I just wanted to give it a go. Um, oh, one was um, just basketball. Um, yeah. You know, during last lockdown, um, The Last Dance was a documentary on Netflix, which I highly recommend. Um, and I was never into basketball at all. Mm-hmm. I watched it and I watched it twice and I loved it. <laughs> and just because of that, I started watching a bit more because I, I was fairly, I was sort of aware of what was going on. Yeah. I really got into it because then I know I'm sure about the playoffs, but mm-hmm. essentially the finals that were going on at a similar time. Yeah. Because of that, then I started playing basketball myself. Oh, really? And, and, yeah. And I've continued that on since this lockdown, last lockdown. Oh, right. Just trying to improve. Yeah. So. Stuff like that. Um, of course, TV shows as well, uh, which doesn't sound great. It's not really a hobby. But yeah, I think basketball is a big one because that changed the way I train and mm-hmm. I became, you know, much better shape. Yeah, That's no, for that sure. Was new. What about yourself? Um, so for myself, I mean, lockdown started around March, right? And then after a couple of weeks or months, it was Ramzan, Ramadan. Yeah. I don't know how people pronounce it, but yeah. Um, and that helped me with the whole dieting bit. Yeah. I got a good diet from that and then I had like you know I went on this diet where it's just normal water one meal a day and by November I had like a really big physical change where like you know my jaw was like you could see pretty much a lot of my jaw you know like I was actually like slim on the face I mean I've gotten fat again on the way on the face and stuff but I had a jawline yeah I had a jawline and I was wow. like damn I have a jawline and I was like yo like I had lost a lot of weight I was around so when lockdown started it was about 100 kg um, and then I got down to about 90, 85 in that range. Wow. And I was purely from, you know, using an elliptical and like a treadmill every morning. I yeah. was just like running every day, just doing loads of cardio. Again, it comes down to the freedom that you yeah. get, you know, you can try different things. Yeah, literally. And then it's like, you know, I was like, okay, I'm doing this. And then um, during lockdown, they were like, you know, you can meet one person outside. Yeah. So me and my friend would walk to a park close to us in the middle. So every day I was doing like a 45 minute walk there and back. So... You know, I was doing a lot of fitness and cardio and that actually helped me a lot in terms of fitness and like health wise and stamina wise. Yeah, yeah. it, it made a big change. Um, but yeah, obviously it went all downhill again. <laughs> yeah, just, I, I think the winter lockdown was a lot different. Than yeah, one. it was a much harder one. Yeah, it was yeah. a much harder one because you didn't want, really want to go out in the nah. freezing cold or rain. No way, no <laughs> way. Like, no, thank you. Well, the summer one was so nice. The summer one was so good, yeah. It's just so quiet. You could go down, enjoy the sun. Yeah, and 100%. Nature. Yeah, I think. You can just like sit on the grass. Like if you went to a park, yeah. you wouldn't have to worry about a bench. Exactly. But now it's like you go in the winter, it's like mud everywhere. It's like it's yucky weather, man. It's not it's not fun. Yeah, it's, it's horrible, yeah. And the thing is you sort of have to because if you don't, you're literally at home all day. Yeah. I don't know about you, that's how I developed a deficiency. <laughs> Just by sitting at home doing I mean, nothing. For me it was like I, I, I was I started my final year of uni in September twenty twenty. Mm. So I was doing my uni work. So I didn't even have the chance to go out. So they would give us, you know, like that's three weeks off, but we're spending those three weeks doing your coursework. And you're like handing in like five minutes before deadline. Yeah. So even even if I wanted to, I didn't have the chance to leave the house. Actually, going on the uni part as well is a good question. Um, would you say that during lockdown, your organization skills slash motivation went up or went down? Because a lot of people have conflicting um, I think, stories about that. I think it's hard to say if it went up or went down. I think at times it was really down mm. and at times it was really high. Okay. Um, and it all depended on whether there was work due or not. That was the key okay. factor. That was like, okay, I've got a course work due end of December. It's now October. Let's start working on it. Mm. Um, I feel like that's a, you know, a generic thing you have at uni. 
but from but when you're at home, it's like you get out of bed and roll straight onto a laptop or computer. Yeah. So even the motivation to go on Teams to listen to a lecture, I, I'm going to be honest, mom and dad don't watch this bit, but I didn't listen to many of my lectures. <laughs> I don't condone this. <laughs> um, I don't either. So it would be on in the background, but you know, I'd be doing something else on another screen. I'd be doing, you know, like, I did a lot of um, planning and a lot of practice for my own, like, YouTube channel and Twitch channel. Um, so I did a lot of work on that. And, you know, during my lectures, I'd say, I don't know, it, the, the, now that I think about it, it's, like, really conflicting because I'm, like, one side of it was really good because it helped predict productivity. But it didn't help productivity in uni. It helped it with other, other things, things that I was doing. Yeah. But... Yeah, I mean, doing the, work, doing the uni work and stuff, that was motivating. It's like, let me get this work done, submit it. You, know, you get your grades really quickly because it's all online. Mm. Um, the only downside, obviously, is like not being able to talk to lecturers, yeah. not having enough time to talk to them because they're now doing loads of online classes. So they're busy. Yeah, no, I mean, me personally, if I was a student, I would look at all my lectures and then I would miss none. <laughs> In fact, I would do extra lectures. But to be honest with you, like I think it, I think you're right. With productivity, actually tends to go up, but then focus for some reason tends to go down. Yeah, it's like, like, it's like hard to keep your attention span, but yeah, you're like, doing more stuff. It's not that like I missed every lecture. I was in every lecture, yeah. but it's not like I was. I, I'm not. I'm gonna. Have, I can say hand on heart, I was not focused a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. because an online lesson is not as engaging as a real life lesson. Hundred percent. So it's hard to stay focused, and then all you can do is open up Chrome and go on YouTube. You know, yeah, and just do other things. So it's 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 kind of tough. I mean, yeah, you're right. Because even because I'm working from home, so I'm not studying. But me working from home, I would actually have to use more brain power to keep focused. Mm -hmm. But I get a lot more work done. Yeah, than I, than I ever did in the office. Mm -hmm. Um, because you, you it's like you have more time to distract as well. Because you you're not in office. For example, if I, if I have to get a glass of water. I have to get up. I have to walk to the glass of water. Get a cup. It yeah, yeah, takes so much time. Now my water's there. I can just go downstairs, grab it, and just go up. And yeah. that'll take me what, like 30, forty seconds. Yeah. So there's just a lot more time for me to do stuff, which is why the productivity level's actually gone up. Mm -hmm. um, weirdly enough, in the long yeah. run. Um, I feel like it's it's also like you can give yourself rewarding breaks. Yeah. You can. Like for for me with uni, I don't know how it's with with work, but for me it's like, okay, I'll start my work nine a.m. Like, because I had lectures then. And I'd be like, all right, after an hour and a bit, let me give myself a 15-minute break, go downstairs, talk to my mum, dad, brothers, whatever, do whatever, come back up, carry on work. And with those short breaks, yes, I would go into the day a bit longer, so I'd go from nine to, like, eight. Yeah. But there would be so much more work done because of the short little breaks I, I could give myself. Yeah. And I feel like at uni or at an office environment, you can't give yourself rewarding breaks. I don't think you're able to yeah. sit in an office and be like, I'm giving myself a 15 minute break because I want to give myself that. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you're right. You can only give yourself like five minute breaks maybe. Yeah. 15 minutes is, um, is a long time and I suppose you can get away with it with work. But I think the difference in work when you're doing at home is that you may not give yourself 15 minutes, but if you give yourself a quick five, 10 minutes, yeah. honestly, it feels like I have enough energy to just go straight for two hours. Yeah, issues. exactly. It's really weird. Like it just... And those one, two hours are very, very productive. I get. I feel like it's, it's just your house gives you that comfort zone. Yeah, it does. Where yeah. it's like, I know I can sit here and do my work. And it's, there's no one watching me. There's no one like judging me too hard. But I can sit here and do my work and I know I'll get it done. It's going to sound weird as well, but I feel like making phone calls can actually be easier as well when you're mm. home because you can sort of, don't experiment, but you just feel confident. Like when yeah. you know no one's listening to it, you naturally just feel more at home and you're more focused on the task. Yeah, no, for sure. Know? Distraction. I suppose the biggest distraction really is your phone. If, yeah. If you if your phone is there on the side and you go on it, usually like you know you're in an office. Your mind is going to be like, <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Whereas when you're at home, there's no one around. Yeah. So it's easy to like get a bit distracted, which is why I find that if I'm on the phone, mm. I check a message. Yeah. And I start scrolling. I'm like, what am I doing? I end up throwing the phone like <laughs> to my bed. But but when it's there, I don't touch it at all. Yeah. Because I. I'm too lazy to actually get out of my chair to get it. But I'm, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just a weird mindset, you know? Yeah, no, it makes sense. But I feel like, yeah, I feel like lockdown just gave me a lot of productivity. I mean, I even achieved my dream of building my own PC. I wow. built my own PC. I like, yeah, a bit of shooting finance for that one. But yeah, I built my whole PC and I was like, yeah, you know, it's like so, a lifelong dream I had and I got to do it during lockdown. There's one of the strange things as well is how people have changed. You know? Yeah. Because honestly, I feel like some people have changed their personalities. I feel like, 
Look, my personality might have changed, but I'm not too sure. I don't. I think everyone's some way changed. Yeah. But I feel like I have a new side to me, which mm. wasn't there before lockdown. I feel like I have a more open-minded side. Okay. Where I'm like, I can look at things and I'm like, all right, that makes sense. Mm. But like that, I understand that point of view. I feel like before lockdown, I was always in this bubble where it's like, yeah, you know, even videos or like things I do or people I interact with, they were part of my bubble where everyone has the same mindset. Yeah. But in lockdown, you get bored of your own mindset in like two yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, of course. So you start exploring all these different, different cultures, yeah. different things. Um, I got really into like the Korean culture, started watching K dramas, listen to Korean music and understanding like why their music is, you know, a bit more flashy than it is in the on the Western side. Yeah. And understanding yeah, yeah. the culture was like like a bombshell. I was like, wow, that, that that's something like really cool. I mean, when I say to someone I listen to K pop, they're like you don't understand anything. It's like, I'm like, yeah, but I listen to it, like the vibes and the culture. There's more to it than just Of course, the words. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that, you're right. I mean, cultures they open up a new, completely new world, new attitude. Yeah. Um, it's weird because I, I feel like I had something a little bit different um, in my personality. I feel like I became less reactive and more proactive. Yeah. Uh, which is good. Uh, but it's a case of like, for example, if I made a plan to, I don't know, get this done, mm-hmm. I wouldn't compromise. Whereas before, I'd be like, let me just go with the flow. And if someone yeah. says, do this work, I'll just be like, oh, yeah, let me just do that, you know? Yeah. Whereas I now I make a plan and I stick with it and it ends up being better. I feel that. No, yeah. I, I was like that. I started adapting to that as well. Yeah. Because before I was like, I would be like, I want to do this. But I'm like, that, that stuff yeah. is coming. Bun it. Like, let's do it a bit later. But now I'm like, I want to do this. Let me make the plan that I can make sure I hit that. Yeah. And I'm able to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've changed a lot, but I've become a more calm, humble, open-minded person. Yeah, I from think, what I was before. Yeah, I think I think most people have developed like a more of an introverted side, which yeah. unlocks that sort of um, careful planning side, you know, yeah. more so. Um, but do you feel like there are some parts which aren't the same? For example, there are certain parts of your personality that you could do before, um, so you could use certain parts of your personality to come to something where you can't do now. For example. I, for example, I'm not as extroverted as I was before. I feel like I'm not. I feel like I'm extroverted in aspects and areas and in the right environment. Mm. But before, I'd be more open to things like talking to people and going to people and be like, just having a conversation. But because of COVID and stuff, you're always like, COVID, two meter distance, yeah. keep a distance. Maybe the other guy doesn't want you to come close to them. Maybe they don't want to talk. You got the face mask, which is a big thing that stops you from socializing. Yeah. Because Emotion is a big thing when you're talking to someone and not being able to see emotion. Like the mouth is the one, a, big, a really big emotion. Yeah. And not being able to see that and being like, is he, is he liking what I'm saying? Is he wanting me to leave? Is he, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to understand that. But I think my sh- social skills probably have gone down. Yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm more comfortable talking to a camera than I am to, to a person. Yeah, just, so. just seeing, I'd rather speak to a person virtually or over the phone than yeah. Like a new person, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, people who I know I'm comfortable with, but like new strangers, I struggle to get words out when I'm there because I don't know if it sounds weird, but I forget what volume is appropriate. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. If you're used to speaking to a mic, you can control it very well. Yeah. But in real life, you're like, wait, am I speaking too loud? I'm speaking yeah. too quiet. Like with me, I, like, I talk quite delicately yeah. into my mic. And then like in real life, I talk quietly and I talk a lot quieter than I used to. I'm like, why are you so quiet? I'm like, oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> I think I'm talking yeah. to a mic. <laughs> Sometimes the opposite. Sometimes I'll be quiet and then all of a sudden I'll shout for no reason. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. just there. Yeah, I get that. Because yeah. sometimes you're thinking like, oh, can they not hear me? And then you just shout your words and it's like, oh, I could hear you perfectly fine. Yeah. And that's good. I think the skills like that is going to take a while before everyone really yeah. gets used to everything. For example, mm-hmm. just tying it back real quickly to what bubble like. For example, you know when you go to a barbershop? Yeah. Talking was a big thing about it, you know. Some yeah. people just love talking about 100%. whatever. And when I went to my barber, um, I, for the first session, did not say a word. Yeah. And my barber didn't say a word either. Mm. Um, and honestly, both of us, we tried at first to speak. Yeah. And then we just went quiet and we felt so much more comfortable. <laughs> and afterwards, we just acknowledged each other. We're like, you know what? That's all right. That's all right as well. And then now we're starting to get back into being able to speak with each other. But... It's weird how when you go to, like you mentioned with the moss, yeah. and for them you get a coffee, speaking, you, you, it's almost a relief when another person doesn't speak to you. Yeah. And I feel like I get the same sense from another person as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
It's like it's like you don't have to have that interaction. Yeah, right? exactly. Because you've got the mask and like, yo, stay away. <laughs> yeah, you just be like, you know what, let's just stay away. And yeah. everyone's happy with it. And people know? just nod and smile at each other. You yeah. Can, you can just do that and then you walk on. I feel like it's time to change now though. Yeah. Because less, more people are re- starting to realise that, you know, you know what, well, let's all talk a bit more. They're yeah. getting more comfortable. I think everyone wants to improve their social skills again. Yeah. And I think everyone's proactively trying to do it as well, you know. Yeah. I mean, talking about the barber thing, actually, um, since March till now, I've only ever had three haircuts from a barber. Really? Yeah. So a lot of them were actually from my brother. So wow. my brother cut my hair a lot. And then um, in February, I just went bald. I just shaved my whole head to like a one. And it took so long to grow back. It's, so. it's a dangerous game. I know some people have done that. It's a dangerous game. <laughs> you know what? I was, like, I was like, I missed out in lockdown one. Because yeah. lockdown one was so long, I could have done it. And I was like, I'm doing it in lockdown two. And you, I was like, shave it. I just shaved all of it. <laughs> I know someone who actually did that. And uh, they lost uh, like an inch of their hairline permanently. Oh, the part of the head just didn't grow back. Oh. That's why I would say, like, be careful. Like, use a professional. You... I, I didn't go bald. I just, I just got, yeah. I got a beard trimmer, set it to one, and it just yeah. went all over. So th- all the hair was, like, still there, but really, really, f- like, fine and small. Yeah, yeah that's what It's like a buzz well. cut. Yeah, exactly. A buzz cut. That's probably yeah. micro. I mean, I've, I'm completely opposite. I've uh, been to my barber very consistently. Oh, really? Yeah, the, because I've changed the way my hair is like long at the top now. Mm-hmm. So, um, and the size always go back quickly. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I missed the barber so much. And <laughs> I got annoyed at my hair after lockdown. I just got long, yeah. hard to manage. But it being shorter, it just takes so much less time, you know? Yeah, 100%. I don't have to worry about putting a hat When on I had a buzz go. cut, life was so good. You wake up, yeah. you don't have to touch your hair. <laughs> you don't have to comb it. Well, you just it. turn on your webcam like, this is how I am. This is how I look. Even having... Um, <laughs> Uh, shorter hair or a cleaner hair yeah wearing a hat is even easier 100 percent. you know when you have like long hair yeah you've got to really adjust the size you've got to adjust where you put it in with, you put it straight up yeah and so i've been going like all the time to my barber just because i love just waking up in the morning spending not like 30 seconds and i'm done i'm ready to go you know yeah. i think that's the key i mean my older brother Tala, yeah yeah he he had wild long hair during lockdown he yeah. just didn't cut his hair but whenever he put on a cap, all the hair would just be like sticking yeah, out of his hat. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like he's happy to go out. I'm like, don't go out. Don't go out. You don't look that good. And it's like, you just have to. You can't cut your hair. You, this is something you just have to do. Yeah, I mean, that's why. It, I, I, think, I think you can get away with it during lockdown because it's an excuse, you know. Yeah. When barbershops open up and I'm at my team meeting at work. Yeah. And they see my wild hair. It just, it just looks bad, you know. Yeah, 100%. There's no excuse for it. There's no excuse. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just being lazy now. I think for me it was different because I never had my webcam on and lectures and stuff. No one has them on. So there was no one every day looking at me. Mm. So I, I had a lot of control of like who sees me and who doesn't see me. You had a bus cut before as well, didn't you? So it was already yeah. short. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, but then, so that was in lockdown two, but lockdown one, it was like, I would notice like, because when I'd record YouTube videos or do Twitch streams, I'm like, dude, I look like a mess. So I'd get my brother to just do a quick trim. Yeah. So that's why there would be those trims, but an actual barber i didn't go at all for a long time Wait. yeah i mean i think it's been quite a long podcast for the first one so um thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed you know what you know what pod is what what but is and um you know the podcast in general are talking about our lockdown experiences if you enjoyed talking to me maybe we can stay co-hosts yeah m- m- maybe Maybe, or maybe the boss will keep snoring to our conversations. You yeah, know, like. But I think I think we may lose our jobs now. May, yeah, uh, I mean, I think we spoke so much, he fell asleep. So if you fell asleep, we did our job because you were probably trying to sleep. You, you know? know what? That's why I do a podcast as well. So if we if you fell asleep, then, you know what? You know you're what? Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. That's the what yeah. we aim for. We're That's like, what we try and do at what part actually? Yeah. We try and put you to sleep. <laughs> you know what? You, you you your efforts in trying to book the barber is completely cut out. <laughs> And because of that, you now have time to sleep. That's the whole idea. Exactly. Of and we'll you give can you... use this podcast to put yourself to sleep. Exactly. We'll give you more time to sleep. You see those YouTube ads that are like, hi, I'll help you fall asleep. And there's they have like a rain. Yeah. Like, no, you listen to Wattpod and you fall asleep. You tell bro. your friends <laughs> that you fell asleep with Wattpod. Yeah. What, what time to sleep? What time to sleep? What? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all the main podcast providers. Also on YouTube, so you can watch, mm-hmm. see our faces and my hair, you know, my trim and stuff. Also check out the website, coming very, very soon, actually. Yeah. So, um, app is also, as you mentioned, coming to App Store soon as well. Yeah. And is it on Android as well? Yes. <laughs> That's 
happening as That's well. That's a big yes from the boss and, uh, who's not big. on cam. <laughs> it's a big yes from the big boss. Big yes. Promote us. <laughs> big whopper. Big up whopper. But yeah, thank you for listening uh, and take care.